If you're a comic artist and ever feel like everything in your head seems amazing, but when you actually start writing dialogue for your characters, something feels off? Maybe they're explaining things too obviously, or every character sounds the same. Or worse, they're pushing the plot forward without any personality. Does that sound like you? Well, today we're going to be talking about a challenge that every comic artist faces. Writing dialogue that doesn't just move the plot forward, but actually brings your character to life. So whether you're working on a manga, webtoon, or any other type of comic, I think that these three tips will help you write much more immersive dialogue. So I'm going to use examples from my own manga, Yield Treehouse. But before we dive into the tips, I need to introduce you to my characters so that you can understand who they are. Because understanding who they are is key to understanding how they speak and how to write dialogue for them. Let's start with Rue, our captain with a complex mix of leadership qualities and self-doubt. She masks her uncertainty with humor and bravado, but underneath is someone trying to live up to her sudden promotion. Fig, the intellectual of the group with a surprising playful side. She's highly educated, having interned with the so-called Madame of Science, and she joined Viviform to pursue her admiration of scientific advancement. Kenzie, a 16-year-old member of the upper class ordained who's been forced to join the team for reformation. She's energetic, sometimes naive, but fearless. Ender, the commander who balances authority with genuine care for his team. He's strategic in his approach, knowing when to be stern and when to be supportive. Solomon Vex, a skilled swordsman with a quick wit and an even quicker blade. He uses humor to disarm situations, often masking his combat prowess behind a facade of casual banter. And finally, Drindith Nosferi, our antagonist and a mysterious ringmaster. He's elegant and theatrical in his villainy, using cordial language that belies his sinister intentions. So let's start with the foundation, giving each character a unique voice to make your characters sound different from each other. So I don't just mean giving them catchphrases or accents. What I'm actually talking about is the character's entire approach to communication. If you think about it, in real life, everyone has their own way of speaking. Some people are direct and other people dance around the point. Some people use fancy words and other people keep their words quite simple. I think your characters should be just as diverse. So to see what I mean, let's look at some characters from Yule Treehouse to see how their unique voice comes through in dialogue. Vex masks tension with casual humor. Even when facing a potential fight, he keeps things light and playful and uses sarcasm as a weapon. Kinsey shows her defiance through nickname giving and her attitude. She establishes control in situations by being the one who assigns names, showing both her youth and her attempt to maintain power even when captured. Fig uses intellectual teasing that reveals her educated background. She can't help but analyze situations even when joking, so it kind of shows her scientific mind and how it influences her speech. Drindith uses formal and theatrical language to create menace. He speaks with an artificial politeness that makes his threats feel even more unsettling. So you can see how each character's dialogue reflects not just their personality, but their background and their relationships and their role in the story. And this is what makes them feel real and like distinct individuals rather than just vehicles for plot points. One common mistake to avoid with this tip is to not just give characters catchphrases or verbal tics. Focus on how their thoughts affect their speech. Okay, now let's talk about something that can instantly make your dialogue feel more intriguing, and that is subtext. This is when the character says one thing, but they actually mean another. It's the difference between very boring and on-the-nose dialogue and conversations that crackle with tension and have lots of hitting meaning. In Yield Treehouse, we have an antagonist named Drindith, who I believe is a master of subtext. So instead of saying something like, I'm going to attack you now, he says, I'm only here to extend an invitation to you as my new friends. It's creepy, it's threatening, but it's also intriguing because of what's left unsaid. In chapter three, Ender says to Rue and Fig, there's a certain level of respect that we should show. When what he actually is saying is stop messing around. This is serious. You're going to get me in trouble. So these dialogue lines work because they reveal character relationships. They show emotional history. They create tension. 
and they make your readers read between the lines. So how can you add subtext to your dialogue? One thing you could do is to think about what your character actually wants. What do they want? Then you can consider what they're afraid of or what they're concealing, what they're trying to hide. And then you could also write dialogue that dances around these things instead of stating them directly. And this brings me to our final tip and the one that I find people struggle with the most. And that is how to make exposition feel natural. How to share important information without boring your readers to tears. So in my manga, I had to explain complex topics like the organization, the regulation, uh, the Nosferi family's history, the political landscape of the country Glory Peak. But instead of using dry explanations, I was able to reveal the information through character interactions. So one example I could give you is when Kinsey is first captured and told she's going to be joining the regulation, rather than having Fig go on a wall of text to explain exactly what the regulation is, I added this interaction between Kinsey and allowed her character to kind of ask the question that the readers want to know, which is, well, what exactly is the regulation? And Fig responds, well, I like to think of us as more like cool special agents than a boot camp. So this is a way to tell you about what the regulation is in world, as opposed to giving you exposition for it. Even serious lore can be delivered naturally. When Drindith says that he's relocated to a new place and that the place has a lot of history, Fick goes on to try and guess what that history he might be talking about is. This is a way for me to tell the reader what that history is in a way that feels natural and real to the current situation that the characters are experiencing. So to make it dynamic, you want to think about what the characters are currently experiencing and how that conversation would naturally flow. If you have a situation where there's an organization and there are a group of people who should know some piece of information, don't have one of the characters go down a list of something that everyone in this group should know. Figure out a way to make that dialogue, reveal that information in a way that would be sensible and natural for the characters in actuality. And now we're going to put it all together. So remember that writing good dialogue is not about just conveying information, but it's about bringing your characters to life and making your readers lean in closer to your story to catch every word that they say. When you combine all of these tips, unique voices and subtext and natural exposition, you can create dialogue with your characters that feel real and engaging. So one final example I want to give combines all three of these tips. So on this page, Ender is confronting Rue because she failed a previous mission and she is getting her quote unquote punishment for failing that mission. So this is a very serious conversation, but it's a very important one to demonstrate Ender's character. So Ender says, look, I know your sudden promotion has you worried. I know you, Rue. You feel like an imposter, but I'll tell you what, I chose you to be captain for a very good reason. Under me, it is okay to fail. Discipline be damned. I'll pick you up as many times as I need to until you commit that truth to heart. I believe in you. As your commander, it's my duty. Now, Captain, I'm certain you've a ringmaster to hunt. This single exchange uses Ender's unique voice, which is supportive yet authoritative, contains subtext. It addresses Rue's unspoken fears about being promoted and feeling not ready. And this in turn reveals that exposition about her recent promotion and the challenges that she's experienced surrounding that. So this is a way that you can give all of these details and information without explicitly having the characters say it. Before we wrap up, here is a quick exercise for you. So take a page of dialogue that you've already written and try to apply these three tips that we talked about. You can start by giving each character a unique voice. Think about what they would speak like based off of where they're from and their occupation. Then you can layer in subtext. Is there any subtext that you can speak to through the characters? And then finally, make sure that if you're doing exposition, if you're giving that lore drop, that it feels natural and it feels very character driven. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe to the Fifi Mangaka channel for more comic creation tips. We talk all about writing for comic artists here, and I just dropped chapter six of Ye Olde Treehouse. If you want to catch up, it's available on Global Comics, and the link is in the description down below. I really appreciate all the support I've been getting on the story. It means a lot to me. Until next time, I'll see you later. Bye.